Welcome to the Tales to the Flipside channel. This is our modern uh, playbook roundtable. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's go ahead and start with our game, or introduce everyone. Ultra. Hello, Ultra Maximus from the Wednesday Night Presser. Uh, to, or I'm sorry, Wednesday night's flip side, 10, 15 p.m. Hi, I'm Nico. Uh, I'm the next Sunday, uh, the CEO of this conglomerate. Steve from My Bargain Comics, coming from you from Baltimore, Maryland, the home of both Diamond Comic Distributors and Penguin Random House. Ooh, strong. Mm -hmm. Hey, everybody. It's your main man, Mercenot. Catch me every Monday and Friday. You know what to do. What's up, all of us? From Blue Artifacts. I'm a, it's a pleasure to join you guys. Thank you for uh, thank you for the invite. Uh, we're here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in my my yellow cavern of boxes and crap. So, uh, no, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm Jessup, half price crook. What's going on? Glad to be here. Glad I made it. Yeah. Cool. Almost got three speeding tickets on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Aaron. Uh, you can catch me on Comic Book Food Chain and then on the Flipside channel, right? All right. So let's get our game started. Yay! I didn't miss the game. So uh, tonight we have for Deal or Flipside. Here's our first set of books. We have Star Wars Solo Adaption number one, the Luke Ross 1 in 50, CGC 9.8. Uh, and then we also have Darth Vader number three, second print, uh, CGC 9.8. Does anyone want to guess what book I'm going to guess? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me give you some numbers. I think you're going to pick a Star Wars book. <laughs> so for Star Wars Solo Adaption, there are a total of 11 graded, 7 at a 9.8, uh, 4 at a 9.6. This also has the first appearance of Key Ra. Sorry if I mispronounced that. And then for Darth Vader 3 second print, there's a total of 249 graded, 170 or at a 9.8, and 9 at a 9.6. Mm, right. Alter, you want to kick it off? <sighs> I guess I will. Um... Since I lack the actual knowledge of these characters and these storylines, except for I know the Dr. Afra one, uh, I'm going to lean with the Dr. Afra, but I, I will be watching that solo adaptation now that's been brought to my attention because any Star Wars first appearance right now, um, I'm watching what's happening with them, and it's pretty amazing to watch, just put it that way. Before all the Star Wars stuff went bonkers, I think I looked at like... I don't know, 10,000 Star Wars books, right? At, at various uh, retail brick and mortars um, during the you know COVID kind of uh, craziness uh, of 2020. And um, I saw zero copies of Star Wars Solo uh, adaptation number one, one in 50. None, not a single one. Um, Unfortunately, I, I don't know that uh, I don't know that it, we are in a market where cool covers and rare books have the same sort of um, upside or, or potential upside as they did, you know, even uh, two, three, four, five years ago. So um, while uh, the Star Wars, uh, you know, one in fifty has in my opinion um like just so much going for it because of its rarity and because of the cool cover uh, my picks darth vader 3 the second print um afra is the character that everybody wants to see in live action and shows no signs of slowing down anytime in the near future yeah i would uh i would say i'm in the same boat too um even though solo ad uh, adaptation is uh lesser on the cgc census like more rare i guess in nine eight i'm going with uh my I'm, I'm back on afra i mean it's it's probably the smart play um more more um uh, i guess more upside i mean we see 349 like wow that's pretty high but i mean i bet you could go to 500 700 you know easily it could be 
uh, I, I guess we can compare this to uh, Ultimate Fallout 4. So let's just put it that way. If uh, if Afra hits the screen, the 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 main word that I recognize is adaptation. So, um, so these two characters have already appeared in the movie and in comics, and I don't hear great thundering footsteps or hand claps to say. We want to see these characters again, and you know we love their their merch. Uh, meanwhile, you know Afra hasn't really hasn't appeared anywhere except the comics, and um, yeah, I I mean it. Yeah, I, I like the comparison to Ultimate Fallout Four. It, it feels like that, like Mel would say that that beat building, and I think it's just going to continue to build. So, yeah, this is a no brainer. Darth Vader three for me. Okay. Um, okay. Now I did I did an eBay search for a solo for the solo book, and I don't see any raw copies of this at all. And and I did and I tried to do you know like none sold, not like in the last like three months, and none are available. And I I like and I like the rarity or seeming rarity aspect of the solo uh man but for, and here's the thing i i have about two copies of the second print dr afra and uh, it, honestly i'm not a fan of either one you know what i mean because i tell you what if darth vader three were say a third or fourth print uh, it would be an easy, easy, easy pick, but uh, uh, I would uh, just to make things interesting, and because of the rarity, or again, seeming rarity of the uh, solo number one, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with solo. Let's mix it up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna play both sides of the fence here first too. Um, the solo book, you know, that might be the best play in the short term uh, for a few reasons. Number one, the scarcity, obviously, uh, and the scarcity might just be because people aren't onto it. It's sitting in long boxes. It's sitting in bins. Nobody's listed them. It wasn't a popular movie in general. Um, it's not really on anybody's radar, but right now, if you have a, a what appears to be a rare Star Wars book, and if you list it with a first appearance of whoever, it really doesn't matter. If you're the only one on eBay, I can see that same book being listed next week and going for six, seven hundred, just just because. Um, so, I, I guess if I had one now, I would kind of uh, on the short term lean that way but if i was going to pick one up for myself i think i would go with the darth vader um because i do think uh i think collectors are gonna are gonna wise up a little bit uh you know if you go on w wikipedia uh about 50 percent of star wars books have the first appearance of somebody. <laughs> somebody's you know it could be just some character shows up in, in two issues there's so many characters in that universe Nobody's familiar with 90% of them. I mean, even half the Darths, people don't even know what they look like or where they came from. Yeah. Um, I, it's going to shake out where, yes, some first appearances are going to be very valuable, but others are nothing. They're never going to be anything. They're not going to hit the screen. I don't know if that's the case with the, the character in Solo. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, but I think Afra is a kind of, you know, Star Wars cult following force of nature. I think there's a lot of people who are going to want that little rainbow display on their wall of, of all the different colors of that uh, that number three. Bingo. Um, so I, I definitely would go with the Darth Vader. But like I said, I wouldn't mind having a solo right now. Final answer? Final answer. Man, I, I tell you what, that solo book, probably just based on the fact that it's got to be a, a pain in the ass to get a 9.8 by the looks of it. I've never seen cool. it. Um, but I would have also the Marvel paper at that time, probably terrible. The only reason I might lean towards the solo is because I don't have it and I have a ton of Afro books. Uh, but I would still take the Afro 
it gun to my head. Uh, and that was a great point you, you said too. Like uh, people are going to want that rainbow. Uh, but I don't think that Vader book's a tough nine eight. Well, I was also going to say that there's, I remember there was a yellow logoed Walmart variant of solo number one that was in the very early Walmart packs mm. that out the gate sold a sold for a big money on eBay. I think it made it, I think it even made a hot 10 list here and there. Um, so that was also one of the reasons I actually have one of those. So I think that that affected a little bit of my choice. Uh, what well, just real quick, who's what was the first appearance in the solo book? So it, 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 it's, it's a whole bunch of people actually if you really look at it it's like uh the first appearance of um what's it q something uh, uh man I uh, key, key 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 raw. yeah q key key raw. Raw. Yeah. is it is that how you pronounce it no <laughs> <laughs> like the but, grain yeah. let's call mark on it uh anyways yeah i wanted to give a shout out to illustrate for uh bringing this book to my attention and he's like he's like Maybe this is a good book to, you know, talk about. I was like, I was like, this might be a good book to talk about, and let me find a book to compare it to. So I was like, Darth Vader three second print. We're all familiar with that, you know. We've seen it on our spec ten list, and I was like, let me throw this out there and see see what the panel thinks. Yeah, um, good stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would pick Solo just for the rarity factor. Uh, you know, I for Darth Vader three, I have the one in twenty five. I have the A cover first print, so I don't care to complete the whole set. So I'm going to pick solo. If this was the one in fifty of the Rogue One adaptation, I go the Rogue One all day. Yeah. Nice. All right. Is that, uh, is that the Terry Dotson cover? Yes. Yeah. Oh. And there's just a ton of those that are just that were just not really being ordered highly. Yeah, and that Andor show is in the good picks. In the works right now. Good picks. <laughs> All right, here's our next set of books. I have <laughs> Batman 635, first Jason Todd as Red Hood in a near mint condition, and then a Daredevil volume two, number nine, first appearance of Echo. I mean, I guess that could be a debate within itself, but let's just go with argument's sake for now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a debate, but that's another issue for another time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, yep. <laughs> You know, uh, what's uh, what's the parameters here? Are we looking for a short-term return or are we looking for a long-term return? The way that I would approach this one, uh, it, it, obviously, DC spec is slow spec. Let's just be honest. Their spec right. takes a lot longer uh, at the moment, but that's a major Bat Family member in, in 635. Daredevil 9 is the first appearance of her playing piano and then... 10 is the one that everybody's trying to argue over being the first full as, as echo or whatever. But uh, I just, I, I don't know if I just completely missed the boat on echo and I, I'm just not really interested in the character, but I do see that she's being used in places now or, or I just know that long-term uh, Jason Todd is the red hood is probably where I would stick my money. If 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 it was a long term hold and it was and it was a high grade pressable, obviously gradable copy. You know, I was thinking uh, a couple of different things. Uh, one, um, we vacillate back and forth about whether or not we should have real bright line rules that we tell everybody, both for the spec ten list and for the uh, dealer flip side game. Um, the advantage of that would be that you know we can kind of explain uh, why we say what we do uh, within parameters. Um, because, you know, in the last book, I, I've got those uh, Vader second prints, which makes, you know, if the, if the issue is like, which book do you want for yourself? I'd take that one in 50, right? But um, so with these, for example, it's like uh, at this buy-in for those particular copies, um, which book has better upside? Uh, yeah, it's the Daredevil book all day, every day. Um, but if it's for me, you know, I take the Red Hood. Um, you know, I, I think uh, if if our, our goal is to kind of try to provide insight about how people can flip books and make money, um, Daredevil, uh, Marvel, uh, Echoes, getting their own television series, uh, that's a tough 9-8 uh, because of the flap on the back cover um, makes a lot more sense to me. Um, you know, DC had one 
Um, okay, rewrite Snyder Cut in the last X number of years, it's tough spec. So if I'm buying DC books, um, you know, this is on a short list for me, but it's not necessarily because of their potential upside. It's because I'm a huge fan of the property, a huge fan of the character, um, you know, and love what they were doing with Batman back then. So my pick is Daredevil number nine. I, I would, I hate to say it, boys, I'd say neither, but if I had to make a choice, it's, uh, I, I'm in the, the 635 camp, even though $162 seems kind of ridiculous, but, uh, cause I remember them back in the day being like way cheap. Uh, 635 is my pick. Red Hood, Jason Todd. I mean, there's a lot of other cool, you know, covers with all that stuff too. But uh, 635, Daredevil. Just I never liked Daredevil. I didn't even go through the Dare. I skip. It's like Fantastic Four. I just skipped the box, dude. Daredevil. I just skipped <laughs> the box. So it's like, I mean, that's what I do. Daredevil, Captain America, unless it's GA and Fantastic Four, I skip. So. Batman 635 is my answer. Okay. I think that's going to be my answer as well. Um, and my, my thought about this is for the time being, you know, for it being sold on March 24th, that has a lot of uh, uh, expectation built into it. I, you know, until we see a, a like a press release or a video presentation from Disney or Marvel and Echo getting their own show, I'm I'm not sure that I'm sold. I do know there's I do I I, I think that it's been confirmed she's going to be in Hawkeye. Uh, I think that's pretty. And you know, a strange thing occurred to me when I got the new previews this past week. They they had the um new the upcoming uh 51st edition of the overstreet price guy coming out mm. and it was interesting that they picked for the cover uh david mack uh drawing daredevil and echo it just seemed kind of wow. yeah it was like a hmm you know um sort of an odd choice i mean yeah daredevil i could see but you know why echo it seems like there's certainly um, a beat building um, with, with Echo, but um, I guess, it, you know, until there's the next, beyond rumor confirmation that she's getting her own show. Um, yeah, I like, I, I, I really like Jason Todd. I think he's a member of the Bad Family that'll um, continue to, you know, be recognized and, and he's just appearing in live action for the first time on the upcoming Titan season. Um, well, the Red Hood is Jason Todd's appeared previously, but um, yeah. So I'm I'm six thirty five all the way. Okay. What do you think, Carter? When it comes to either of these books, you know how we ride: cover price or die. <laughs> now, when it comes to the price point, now. <clears throat> Crap! I don't, ew, I don't like either of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, the brave new world, sir. I know, right? Ew, ew. Um, <laughs> I, I'm gonna go with. You know what? Batman is Batman, and bat like a Batman key is a Batman key. So I like Batman six thirty five. Love it. Love Batman six thirty five. And to be quite honest with you, now. That that um that Daredevil n number nine that price is out of date. That thing is that thing is up way more now. Um, but still, still I I like Batman. Love Batman. Six thirty five. That's my final answer. Man, it's only three days out of date, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't find an auction within like this time period. So. Oh, all right, all right. So, uh. You know, I think some of you said, Nico, everybody's got their own perspective of why they're buying in the first place. If you're if you're buying for your PC or if you sell some things to build your PC or if you just sell, I, I'm kind of coming at it as a pure seller right now. because That's kind of my focus. Um, and I'll be honest, I'm not a huge, I don't hate DC, but I'm not a huge DC guy. I'm going to lean toward, I'm going to go with the Daredevil number nine, Batman. I 
modern DC books, especially first this person as this person, they've had so many people take the mantle of different characters. It's it's not something that I that I chase. Maybe that's my maybe that's my bad. Maybe that maybe I need to be in that market. But I'll tell you why I like the Daredevil though. Uh, I know the 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 talk of her own series has not been officially confirmed. It makes a lot of sense though. The these first phase of uh, Disney Plus shows are definitely going to be the launching pad for the next two phases of Disney Plus shows. And if they have an excellent casting, they're going to take advantage of that as much as they can. So if uh, that's the case, uh, you know, Echo has gone from a year ago being what a, a D level character. I mean, you could be a collector and have never heard of her, honestly. Uh, to if she's getting her own series, if she's becoming popular with the masses, people outside of comics, she's going to have ongoings. She's going to have. When that ongoing ends, she's going to have another ongoing. She's going to be part of a team, Defenders, Avengers, whatever. Uh, we're kind of seeing the rise of, you know, going from a, a, a E or D level character um, up the chain quite a bit. Uh, so I think these, these both 9 and 10 are going to become more important as time goes on. Um, so, and Marvel's just money. I mean, you know, yeah. how each of these shows is launching how many spec books, how many, I mean, crazy numbers we're seeing on first appearances. So I'm going to, I'm definitely going to go with the daredevil number nine. I'm going to go daredevil number nine too. Um, I'm not buying either of these books at that price point. Um, but I've got a, a small stack of six thirty fives. Um, actually I'm going to sell if they're going for that much, but, uh, <laughs> I hate Jason Todd. Um, <laughs> always have <laughs> and the daredevil book I, like i'm not so sure on the, i don't have nine and i don't have ten but after uh hearing mr longshore's explanation on ten uh i don't think it's going to matter i think people are going to buy nine and ten yeah but i would uh I, i'd buy nine at that price point and send it to cbcs for a quick turnaround and flip it because i i don't know anything else about that character where it's going to go. So that's where I'm going with that. Uh, I don't think that's a, a book to sit on. I don't think it's going to be the next Gwen Stacy or, or anything like that. But like I said, I have no idea about the character other than all the hype that's been building up. So uh, Daredevil 9. But only to flip. I'm not keeping it. Yeah. So and I'm selling those 635s. Jesus. Near mint minus. Raw? Get out of here. So as uh, Carter say, you know, cover price or die, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago, I went back issue diving. I found the Batman 635. My man. At a probably like an 8.5 grade is what they estimated that. Guess how much I paid for it? A dollar. Come six, six dollars. A little over cover ain't Bye. bad. Yeah, nice. they press really. They press really nice too. So uh, good luck. Ooh, that's a good. That's a good note to know. So I'll probably do be adding that to my press pile. Um, yeah. I, I cannot find Daredevil's nine or ten. Like no, try they're clean. Yeah, they're cleaned out everywhere. Like, and so, I mean, but at this price point, I guess I would have to pay for the Daredevil nine. But I would definitely prefer finding another Batman six thirty five. <laughs> Let's move on to our next set of books. So we have Department of Truth number one, the one in 100, the, and Something is Killing the Children, the number 11, one in 100. I also want you to notate that the date is February 24th for the Something is Killing the Children, and the Department of Truth is February 27th. So let's, uh, let's mix things up. Let's start with uh, Jessup. Um, I'll take the Department of Truth number one. It's been optioned already. That would be my my first go to. Um, it was there something with something is killing children eleven. I have still have not read that series. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So it's the first appearance of uh, the Order uh, of Saint George that is now getting their spinoff uh, series. So this is like the standout number. This is the standout book 
for that forthcoming series. I should Man, shut that, my mouth since I don't have either of these books. And I don't either. Um, yeah. Man. <laughs> and fuck you, Aaron. Uh, yeah, it's a good one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why are you starting down there? <laughs> um, boy. <laughs> I'll, I'll still I'll stick with my gut. I'll go with the Department of Truth, uh, number one. Uh, although that 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 cover for Something's Killing Children is pretty sick. I like the homage. It's it's dope. But I go with Department of Truth number one. Even though I think the number two issue of Department of Truth is the one that everybody loves because uh, the baby eater, right? Shout out to Bill. Final answer. I'll stick with Department of Truth one. I'll probably kick myself, but. I, ha I, I do have the, the something is killing the children, so I might say Department of Truth just so I could have both of them. Right. Um, I guess I think something is killing the children has more of a track record as young as they both are. You know, there's multiple books in something is killing the children that are going for big money. Although, I mean, even if even if you don't read Department of Truth, if you love something is killing the children, you're probably picking up the top book anyway. So. That's a good point. Um, I, I guess I like the fact that it, you know, it does have that first appearance. Uh, I think I think they both will be optioned. I guess I, I like the. I, I, I believe that the the plot or the story of something is killing the children could be more of a franchise, as opposed to Department of Truth. I think it'd be cool to see it on screen, but you know, I think it might be you know a few seasons of like an X Files type of kooky you know twin peaks kind of show um i think something is killing the children could have more legs so i'm gonna go that way i'll pick up a second copy okay i like both covers uh tremendously i like uh number 11 uh just it, number 11 edges edges out department of truth just ever so slightly um man this is really tough just just strictly off of cover fire i'm gonna go with something is killing the children number 11. i'm gonna go with that just strictly off of the cover okay um God, I'm, I'm so disappointed in so many people on this panel i'm just uh <laughs> uh well i you know i've made no secret of my my love for department of truth so um you know it, it just speaks to the zeitgeist of our times that we're that we're living in and that we will be living in seemingly forever um sadly uh, um <laughs> so uh gee a number one versus a number 11 and both one of 100 i i just I, I try not to get too emotionally attached to, to books, but I don't know how you don't go with Department of Truth number one, you know. But um, that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm going with. I mean, a number one versus a number eleven. Uh, if for yeah, uh, I don't know. Something is killing the children. I'm just not on that train. I'm just not. And I'm not going to apologize for it either. <laughs> I love you that you made this argument for me because I'm I'm on something is killing the children number eleven because just like all these other runs that you see, there's got to be. I'm, I mean, if it's a number one, you know it's going always going to be heavily ordered. You know there's going to be a lot of <laughs> one on one hundreds out there because you know big retail stores are going to order it. When you start getting into these runs, like. Spider, you talk about sp like Spider Gwen, all these you know one in fifties, one in a hundred, where it's like number twenty five and twenty three. Nobody's ordering fifty of those after twenty three. I mean, hardly unless you're a diehard guy who's trying to you know get the all set. But I'm going for rarity, and it's going to be probably something that's killing the show number eleven. I, I would assume would be more rare when it comes to one in one hundreds than Department of Truth number one. Now I could totally be wrong with this when, when the numbers finally come out, but I'm going to go with the deeper run in one in one hundred and say it's something is killing the children number 11. just a note on that dino you know, i know ross ritchie did a post on mm -hmm. instagram where he broke down the five rarest uh copies of something is killing the children and i want to say this came in number two yep 
Uh, I think it was number three. Was it? Yeah. Well, so top five, I mean. Yeah. You're splitting hairs at that point. But yeah. didn't uh, Department of Truth have, was, was it 100,000 copies for number one? I, I don't know. I don't know. Or is that number not be released? I have a dream. Somebody said that was around 100,000. I don't know. I'll buy them all. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I, I think uh, Steve's analysis is spot on. Um, now, it could change uh, to the extent that this uh, second volume of something selling the children is some sort of standout hit. And, uh, you know, this becomes like number 11 becomes the go to book for that order of St. George. But, you know, like everything else, it, they didn't. Uh, this isn't like 1960s Marvel where they're like introducing the order of St. George. You know what I mean? Like they're sort of sprinkled throughout a lot of issues. So uh, the, for the first appearance, I, I think it's there. But like eh. and uh, when it comes to independence, as again, Steve has observed, I think, astutely. Um, you know, but for The Walking Dead, ask me how many first appearances of Michonne have sold lately. Uh, it's really the that issue number one, and then maybe with The Walking Dead for a little bit, people cared about the governor. And, you know, um, I'm also a homer for the Department of Truth. I think it's exceptional. Um, I think it's got a lot of TV potential. I, I know people want uh, Something is Killing the Children on television. And uh, I think it could be cool. I really do. But without seeing this second volume spinoff, uh, my money is with the Department of Truth number one. Well, Aaron, dead, thank you. For, it's a dead heat tie, right? Three for three. <laughs> well, take me back to this time uh, a month ago now, and I would buy both of those books at both of those prices instantly. Yeah. Yes. Without, without hesitation. Um, so thank you, Aaron, for going in a reverse and giving me an opportunity to research a little bit of more of what's happened to these books since this date. Oh, my yeah. God. You, <laughs> you, All right, you're, so, you're, you're spoiling my twist. <laughs> well, this, this is this is an insane. The, the writing is what is moving these books for sure. All right. And, and let's let's just, just pay homage where homage is due. Uh, his writing skills are superior. And that's the reason why he's currently on Batman. He's writing these two books. And I think he's doing another one for DC Black Label coming up soon. So not only is he keeping busy, but he's keeping us entertained. And that's really why we're we're all into reading this stuff. Is we're looking for entertainment. And then the movie executives and the TV studios, yeah, they're they're coming into this medium and looking for stuff that they can take that's already a property, somebody else's idea, and turn it into something that we see visually. With that being said, and that understanding of what has gone on with Department of Truth, I personally like the Department of Truth book more, but Something is Killing the Children number 11 would be my pick. And I think ye might know why, because both of these books, um, man, what? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so, all right, so before I reveal the big, like, twist and everything, um, I own both so, of these books. I bought both, of, I bought both of these at Ratio. I think I even have an extra Department of Truth, I want to say, but I think I only have one copy Claim. of the, uh, of the <laughs> Claim. number uh, one in 100 uh, of uh, something that's killing the children. Um, but if I wanted to find an extra copy, I would definitely pick up another copy of something that's killing the children. So for the big twist, so the following month on March 21st, Jesus Lord have mercy. So you have graded copies coming back from CGC and these are sold listings. And I want to say that even the Department of Truth, there were even higher listings of hitting over 1K, right? Ultra was like $1,300 yeah. $1, or something like that. And now both books have listings in the four figures for nine point eight. So yeah, so you really we apparently go. were asleep at the wheel while this was happening, but the the ship was driving itself. So there was there was no no need for anybody to be awake at all. Uh, this train was leaving, and if you weren't on it, you might have missed it. And then uh, the, this 
the first one in 100 for something that's killing the children also. So most of their incentives were only one in fives, and they like slowly built up. And All there right. was also a uh, signature series that had an asking price of fifteen ninety eight for the something is killing the children that had its best offer accepted. Yeah, and it's going crazy on Facebook with the signature series coming back from the uh, from the signing. I think that was done overseas wow. or something like that. Yeah. What a time to be alive, and what a time to be first to market. Yeah. Uh, all right. Good stuff, for, buddy. Good stuff. Yep. For our last set of books. So we were talking about a, 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 a trade, right? Like backstage, like a couple of days ago. And so I found com, uh, competitive prices. So we have a, a Hulk 21 uh, at a 4.5 that sold for $3,955. And then the 8.5 Ultimate Fallout 4 1 in 25 that sold for $3,351. So the question to the panel is, if you were in possession of, uh, I don't know, which one do you want to possess? We'll say since oh, we this is personal. Don't, yeah, so if you possessed a <laughs> Ultimate Fallout 4 1 in 25, would you trade for a Hulk 181? And then uh, I don't care who starts. Well, Nico, why don't you start? Well, because I was about uh, to. Assuming that you you're talking about Nico and I. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to want do you want to set this one up, Jessup? Explain what's going on, and then you yeah. can force me start, to pick. start down. Start down there. Work your way back. <laughs> you force me to pick. <laughs> All right. At that Harper show in Columbus, Ohio, uh, I didn't set up at a table, but I, I'm going to gamble to say I, I I probably did pretty well for not having a fucking table. So. I had a guy follow me around because I, I took six books, six or seven books in. One was an, a 180, one was a 181. And some I had the 181 sit on, on the top of the stack. And some guy comes over and we were at somebody's table. And he's like, are you selling those? And I said, yeah, you know, everything's for sale. He goes, how much you want for it? This guy's itching. He walks around. One other person at the show had a Hulk 181. I see him go over to that table but there were like two people ahead of him and the guy ahead of him asks for the 181. So the guy that asked me is now like scrambling around looking for me because I had the only other one there comes over, then asked to look at it again and then sees I had a Hulk 180 underneath it, but that was even lower. It had a huge stain that looked like somebody tried to take something off it or something. It was smeared the ink and, uh, he goes, does that have the Marvel stamp too? I said, yeah. And I don't even know if he saw the, the smudge on the cover, but he immediately, can I look at it? I said, yeah, let's get away from somebody else's table. You know, that that's rude. Let's go over here. He looks at it and he goes, well, I never pay full price for anything. But I did talk to Nico like an hour before the show started. And he said, well, hold on to it. Let me take a look at it. Because I was interested in his ultimate fallout. He got the show before. That guy back from the press. Uh, and I was completely interested in that because I, I, I passed on one. It, it, the one I passed on wasn't a nine, four. It was probably an eight, five uh, or, or maybe less. It looked destroyed to me at the time, but still kicking myself for not picking up that for three seventy five. I had taken one. It, I take a seven, five right now, just to say I had one, but Oh god, that eight five looks good. I I would probably take the eight five, uh, ultimate fallout four because they don't have one. And for whatever goddamn reason, I seem to come across a Hulk wedding one about every six months. They seem to come up all the time. I I never ever, other than like I said, the one time I saw one at Capital City Comics. Shout out to them. Um, ever see one? And I'm so jealous that Nico got that. Well, that's a great snag, dude. Um, Thank yeah. You. So, but let me ask Nico: Would you have traded me my raw five five for your slab? Was it a nine o or a nine? Yeah, it was a nine o. Yeah. What would you What would you have done? Well, I'd have had to seen it, uh, but I trust your your grading, and uh, you know my in. 
for the record, the 9-0 was unpressed, right? Um, but yes, I had every intention of being like, thank you, I'm out. Um, and it would have been a downgrade for me. I, I sold a, a 6.5, I think, for two grand right uh, before COVID started. But, you know, uh, the books are moving and prices are moving. And, uh, you know, my heart's with uh, older books. Um, I get the miles train um, and that, you know, there's potentially a lot of upside in an unpressed uh, 9.0 for a super rare variant. I think if you go to Nerdbox Comics on Facebook, you can see the before and after pictures. Um, CGC was very kind to this book uh, um, in its prior state. And uh, the guy that pressed this thing for me did a lot of work and it looks a lot better. Um, we'll see how it comes back. Um, but yeah, I'd have been in, but it, that's just, uh, that's my preference for older traditional keys. Um, and you know, I like to kind of like uh, horse trade and swap books. So yes, yeah. <laughs> you, you'd have to pry, you'd have to pry the ultimate fallout for, from, from my hands wow. and then pry the Hulk 181 into my hands in order to do, do this. I mean, just think about the time value of, of money and how long it's taken that 181 to get mm -hmm. to that amount and how That's long it's point. taken fallout to get to that. And which do you think is going to double the quickest? I We've mean, We've already seen Wolverine. We haven't yeah. seen Miles live action. I mean, look out when that happens. Yeah. Just, Stop building Nico up because I still want his book. <laughs> <laughs> How's that Vampirilla one looking for you? <laughs> oh, shoot. That's why I love this show. <laughs> All right. Well, let's hear from everybody else. Come on. Oh, I was going to say, oh, just Ultimate Fallout, as long as it was graded by the same guy, graded Nico's. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. You know I got a, a rough batch of CGC books coming back, and that's all I need. Don't, don't uh, as they say, wish that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Well, no, 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 no. I'm just saying the, the, the one that you purchased – was uh, the guy had a very good night before grading that book. My man. Yeah. <laughs> I would I would like it if, you know, I too could find one of those ultimate fallouts like that. But uh, yeah, you, you, look, I know everybody's like talking about live action this, live action that. But what about just, again, specking on comics that affect the comic universe mm -hmm. and comic sales in the future and, and things like that. And Hulk... 181. I don't think they're planning on killing Wolverine anytime soon, but I do think Wolverine yeah. will outlive Miles. But that being said, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, in, in the in in the comic story, he has to outlive him. Oh, you mean Wolverine. like thousands of years? In the yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if, if, if he is going to be the Wolver Phoenix, you know, we we've seen one possible outcome. But Miles is he's a phenomenon. That's for sure. And I can't believe what I'm seeing with some of these books that relate to him and others. I mean, again, it's we have a new wave of uh, an influx of new fans in the buying community. And as the buying community gets bigger, the number of available books goes down. When the number of available books goes down, the prices go up market absorption you know so i'm watching miles get absorbed into market more rapidly than hulk 181s let's just put it that way anybody else nice got take on this one i love oh. both i love both um damn okay so i'll tell you what as the uh, proud owner of a 98 uh, ultimate fallout 4 Variant. Um oh, in. man. Uh Tra trade it for a car. Right? No. Oh my god. Oh. I tell you what, uh ETA Nick, I was watching his video and he said and he um he mentioned someone traded their stock, their ever rising stock. Uh they traded it in for a car, and he's just like that was the dumbest thing I ever right? heard anybody do. And man, I and here's the thing. I'm holding on for dear life when it comes to uh, Ultimate Fallout 4. 
I'm holding on. I want to see where this roller coaster goes. Like it could crash. To me, no big deal because that that price just seems so unbelievable. You know what I mean? Like just prices for this just seem so unbelievable now that if it crashes, I'm like, oh, okay, no big deal. Um, as far as Hulk 181 goes, I've seen this book just so many times. I love the book though. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, you make fun of me for not having one. Well, you sold yours off though. I did. Yes, yeah, so it's not like you're buying never, another one soon. It's not like you never had any. You know what yeah. I mean? That's that's like a new move to not ever have a Hulk 181. Um, and so I think the one that I have is an eight five. And it's so weird that it's so weird that like that modern book, that modern variant is worth more than a Hulk 1185. You know what I mean? That's just and it bl it blows my mind. But actually there is no but. I'm going <laughs> with uh, Ultimate Fallout 4 just because it just because uh, I, I I just I, I I feel that I can get a Hulk 181 like anywhere at any time, but Ultimate Fallout 4 at this point just feels super rare. It feels like grabbing the um, the I was gonna say I was gonna mention the the Maltese Falcon or something like that. You know what I mean? That's what it feels like. And so I'm going with <clears throat> Ultimate Fallout. Hey Carter, yep. uh, you you beat all of us to that show. Was there more than one, one eighty one there? The guy in the center had one. No, I didn't see any others. Like okay. zero, zero. That was that was the only time at that show. Every every time at that show, there's one there. Normally, it's yeah. the guy to the left as soon as you walk in. Yeah, yeah. all the good bronze stuff. But mm -hmm. and normally, the people in Columbus that get them send them to me. Oh Fix really? Okay. Yeah. I fixed the one I was there at last show and the one before that too, because they go to Comic Town and then they, hey, will you fix this? And you know, but it was crazy because then they're like, yeah, then they make like an extra five hundred bucks and they're happy because they mm -hmm. sell them. I don't. I yeah, bought. I I yeah, I don't get selling uh, Hulk one eighty ones to make five hundred bucks. Great you know, ones, and I still do have a one eighty one. It just doesn't have a cover or a Marvel value stamp. <laughs> <laughs> But I can pick it up and read it anytime I want to. Right on. <laughs> I'll, I'll, throw my, I'll throw my two cents in quick. I'm going to go against the grain and, and actually go with Nico. Uh, I'm picking up Steve. You know, uh, for me, Hulk 181, it's like as comics go up in value, Hulk 181 is going to go up in value. It's 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 more like a stock. It's like the, the bluest of blue chip stocks that you could own. I don't think there's – it's not even associated so much even with the character anymore. It's just that's, you know, and it, it may be plentiful and there's, you know, at least one at every show out there. Um, not that I, I have nothing against Ultimate Fallout 4. I wish I had picked one up back when they were 2100 and I was looking at, 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 at buying one, never did pull the trigger a couple of years ago. I yeah. do, maybe this is totally unrealistic, but I have dreams of still being able to find one. Like, a, mm -hmm. like a, some 55 year old parents whose kid moved out and they've got a this white box in the closet and want to get rid of it on Facebook for 150 bucks. You know, I've, I, uh, I, it's probably never going to happen, but it, it's possible. I don't know. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the, the Hulk of 181. Thank you. Shit all over that book because I want to talk to Nico. I'm going to call you after this show. <laughs> so it, if I had an Ultimate Fallout 4, I would definitely trade for one. And the only reason oh, why... Look, I, we picked up Steam at the end. <laughs> and, and, and th this is the reason why. My brother's a huge Wolverine fan and does not have this book yet. Wow. He has a 180, a 182, but does not have a 181. So I definitely would just like hold it over him, be like, "Look, I have a one eighty one, and you don't." <laughs> I thought this was gonna be like a brotherly gift, like a yeah, love. me too. That went no, different no, way than I anticipated. Don't think we all I mean, you're a yeah. good brother, but I mean, yeah, I probably eventually have brothers. 
I mean, eventually I would give it to him, but I mean, you know, <laughs> just, just for, for a little bit of fun, you know, I would just hold it over and say, like, look, I have it and you don't. I mean, he was holding out for a four time signature forever and just never pulled the trigger on it. And then, you know, it's so like out of reach now at this point. But yeah. So anyways, thank that, you all for that playing. Really, that didn't break the, like the wave didn't break the way that I wanted it to. I'm just saying <laughs> like for a second there and then it was like a wipeout for me. I was like, Aww. <laughs> well, thank you all for playing uh, Dealer Flipside. Um, Good stuff, Aaron. Let's uh, move on. So for eBay's news, we have uh, questions from Dave Durr. Um, I believe he's an international shipper, or, or he lives in Canada. And so he was asking about getting books from the US. And then uh, you know, quite a few of us sell on eBay. Do you want to answer this question for him? of how to combine shipping i can do it i can handle this one because i bought a i buy a lot from uh, apparently uk and canada and uh, apparently there's people in canada that want to buy from us here in the united states which is kind of cool so steve horn has pointed out like times there's like it doesn't load the request total button when you add stuff to cart so this is where you're going to have a choice and message the seller and let them know that hey there's a couple items i'm, I'm wanting to buy you know, how do you how do you combine shipping or do you combine shipping? Now, unfortunately, there are sellers out there that do not combine their shipping no matter what. And they will charge you the separate shipping charge per item, even if they're combining them in the same box. And I know how, you, how everybody feels about that, but it's your choice once you figure that out to decide whether or not you wish to continue to do business with this person. Because that business practice is obviously not exactly scrupulous <laughs> and uh you know so it, it's something that we we come across but if you want to try to combine shipping don't go immediately to check out and to your paypal you want to go to your cart first and look at the top box there should be a little uh request total from seller pay only the seller or or one of those options and you want to try to see if by hitting those they combine any items that you might have from the same seller into one combined shipment. Uh, if they do not, this is at the point where you would send the, the seller a message and find out whether or not they do offer combined shipping discounts. But unfortunately, that's a checkbox that is not checked by a lot of sellers out there. And and then again, you have other sellers that just flat out, you know, include the shipping charge in their pricing. So if you see a book that's ten ninety five free shipping and they have 25 copies available and you buy 15 of them, and there's no best offer button, uh, then I mean, combined shipping is it should be nil, <laughs> like at that point. But there, there's still you know a lot of different ways that you can reach out to the seller to try to find that. Um, and and unfortunately, a lot of us here in the United States, because of uh, just you know the the policies of PayPal have kind of caused us to to have to use the international shipping program as a means of just verifying that our contents are going to where they're, they're going to. Uh, I'm sorry to say that I use the international program and, and I think that does affect customers in Canada as well, but you want to try to find priority international shipping. Uh, it's usually around $20 and it's, it, you know, it's one of those preferred methods, but if you are dealing with people outside of eBay, they're international priority mail insured with signature and tracking and delivery confirmation and all the goods. That's how, that's how you do it. Thank you, Ultra. All right. So moving on real quick, we have uh, Pierce Brosnan in the new Black Adam movie to play Dr. Fate to opposite uh, Delaine Johnson. Anybody excited about uh, excited about this movie? I'm just Nobody amazed. At, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm continuing to get sales on the, um, the more recent Dr. Fate book. So What's the kid's I, name? I, Nasir? Right, Khalid, yeah. Khalid Nasir. Right, yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel like this was announced early in the week, and I, I still got a sale for the recent one. So, I, I don't know if the news has made the made its way, or they think maybe this will be a, a multi generational character. Hey, Pierce Brosnan, you know, I I enjoyed him in um, in the Bond movies, you know. So, uh, is that a 1984 picture of Pierce Brosnan? Because yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> no fucking way he still looks like that. 
I'm just you guys throwing age that well. Yeah. Or 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 that. Like I think it is great casting to get him in one of these big movies. Marvel's probably should have done it by now in, in some role or other. He's a great actor. Um I love him, man. I love him as Bond. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I don't know what your all prospects are on, on the, the Black Adam movie. I mean, it's, it's The Rock, so you, you put him in anything, and it's going to make a lot of money. So I don't know. Yeah, I um, you know, I'm 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 probably the lone you know DC kind of fan, you know, maybe a grumpy fan, but uh, <laughs> you know, and and I I think I'm repeating myself from you know past shows going. Yeah, I'll believe this Black Adam movie when I see it, uh, because it's it's been so long since it's been announced, and I really didn't like that at Fandom they showed the computer graphics as like some type of trailer. I thought that was kind of lame. So I'd like to see it progress and just come out already. I mean, it's been like six years, I think, you know, in the making <laughs> at least. You know, I feel like we probably have another two to go, um, but it it it'll, it could it could be you know it'll be interesting you know if they, if they pull it off. I mean, it sounds like, I mean, I've always loved the the Justice Society as much as I've loved the Justice League, um, and you know, uh, Justice League kind of hasn't gone anywhere. <laughs> You know, I mean, even after the what, what is the last week's release of the uh, the Snyder Cut, so I, I feel like this is maybe them taking a cut at the the JSA by including Hulk Girl, right, and and Doctor Fate, Adam Smasher, Cyclone. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of you know hoping for the best, but being just keeping. Uh, keeping myself realistic as well. Um, you, you said that you were making sales from the Doctor Fate series. Were you talking about his like first solo title? The, I'm talking about when they did DCU. It was like uh, it was right before Rebirth. It was like 2015. So they introduced a new younger Doctor Fate, but clearly mm -hmm. this is not the new younger Doctor Fate. So that's why I'm saying maybe it's a. Uh, uh, maybe they do actually have a a, a generational uh, a plan in place where, you know, Pierce Brosnan, as, as someone mentioned, you know, this might not be a recent photo where, you know, he passes the torch down to a um, um, to um, someone from of of of, of Mid East descent, uh, like like I think it's Kelly. Uh, uh, no, sir. In 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 the 2015 series, he has to be 65 years old. I'm just guessing. <laughs> no, right? My clothes. Yeah, I think that's probably a good guess. Yeah. Probably. All right, and so some uh, real quick with the uh, Berserker. Uh, if you buy issues one and two, then stores had to make sure to order the uh aka secret variant that no one knew about and everyone thought it was just going to be a berserker secret variant but it turns out it was a something is killing the children and then shops were told to pull these uh tags shown in the middle because the uh the published date for berserker number two is now april 24th yeah this was just um this was just a mess. I mean, you know, I have a, I have a diamond account. Um, so I do remember FOC the previous week, there being a surprise variant and it was, a, it was a one in three. So for every three copies of Berserker two, you ordered, you could order one of the surprise variant. And of course, just like you said, Aaron, just like everyone else, I thought, Oh, this is going to be some, just what the world needed yet another <laughs> Berserker <laughs> variant. Right. Um, and then, then, then came the news of, uh, oh no, it's really uh, something that's killing the children. And then you go like, oh, if I if I had only known, right? Did you up your order? Well, no, it, it, it they um so FOC ended on Monday, and then I think this news came out on Tuesday, so it was too late to uh, to change it. So couldn't do anything about that. Then. 
I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. I think it was Wednesday. They released the news that, oh, this card, and I, I have one here, this card, they call it a blow-in card because it's blown in um, to the pages. They actually wanted the retailers to remove it from copies of um, uh, Berserker uh, 1 uh, because this wasn't actually the plan that they were going with. Uh, but unfortunately, they attack, they, they put it as a zip. Well, first of all, they released it late in the day or late in the, the net following day, and it was in a zip file. And at least for me, I couldn't access the zip file. It didn't download. So I didn't get I didn't get this information, I feel like, until the the following day. It, it was just too late. And the gist of the frequently asked questions that I read basically says, you know, it's really as, um, you know, as supplies last. Yeah, at participating retailers, that's, that's the fine print there. At participating retailers only while supplies last. So what's really going to happen is some shops will have ordered that one in three um, ratio variant, which is actually something that's killing the children, number one, eighth print. Um, who knows how many copies they ordered? They they don't have to um, redeem them in, in, the, in this fashion. That's why they wanted them to remove this. Um, basically, they can do whatever they want with those something is killing the children, number one, eighth prints. Um, if they even have them. Um, so I think there's going to be, you know, uh, you know, some, some retailers will do a little the bit, right a little bit of a backlash. Yeah. Yeah. Some retailers will do the right thing if they can, if they've even ordered enough copies, uh, some, some of the retailers, the hands are going to completely be tied because they didn't order any. And then there's going to be probably a lot that are in the middle that are like, Hey, I can do whatever I want. Is this um, also an attempt to do like a like an answer to a bad idea type stunt? Like, let's do something out of the box, and then it didn't quite work out the way it was supposed to. When I whatever read about happened, all of this, it didn't quite work. What, yeah. Whether they were trying to do a, a a gimmick or whether they were, you know, trying to do some clever marketing. I, I I don't I don't want to pass judgment. I'll leave that to other folks. Um, <laughs> but whatever way it went, it, it didn't work. Right. Yeah. When I was when I read about all this, all I kept thinking about was that um, Bart Simpson meme where he's got the "at least you tried" cake, and then he throws it in the trash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what I heard from our shop was that uh, they basically ordered enough, like I think like eight copies or something like that. And uh, I have a pool box there, and I actually have Berserker in there. And I was like, is there any way I could get it slipped in my box? He was like, we're going to do it as a first come, first serve basis. So be prepared, be prepared to show Wednesday on the 24th or whatever. And good luck to you. So I was you like, should, okay. You should bring him the uh, or her the at least you tried cake and then, <laughs> and then throw it at him. <laughs> I'm going to wear a GoPro into my LCS. Do you remember like, when uh, people used to cry and complain that I was mean to retailers? That was like <laughs> two weeks ago. <laughs> the fuck so, out of here. All right. <laughs> oh, did anyone else hear the rumor that it might be a Berserker uh, homage? Yeah, it's, I, it's not a rumor. <laughs> that, that was part of uh, was that the frequently asked questions that they, they sent out. It It, it is. <laughs> I, they didn't. They didn't show the actual art, but they said. Uh, I think even including the lo the logo. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of like what we just saw with something that's killing the children and um, and uh, Department of Truth, you know, flipping, uh, exchanging homages. Yeah. So, what do you all think is going to happen with this something that's killing the children? Is it going to be better than the the? The, the the last foil reprint that came out is this nothing i think it's going to be short supply 
high yeah. demand. Yeah. You know, who, who doesn't want a something? I mean, if people want a something is killing a children number 11 <laughs> ratio variant, then they're definitely going to want a something is killing the children number one eighth print that's probably in short supply. Because yeah. like I said, everyone thought of, I mean, I think most people thought it was just a berserker two, one in three variant. Right. And, you know, who cares? How many of those do, do, did people really want? want you know, what stores yep. wanted to order? Three, the, the set of three books, uh, they're going pretty cheap right now on eBay. Who knows if, you know, they're basically a pre sale. So maybe a lot of those will evaporate if the books don't show up. But yeah. Yep. Oh, hope, my, hope mine get delivered. I should order them from a couple different places. Might have to order some more. I mean, they, they should know how many of the the eighth print they they ordered. I know, but I get more. I get more. The only thing that I get uh, canceled more than people buying things from me on eBay is when I buy things from people on eBay. Like they don't pay for auctions they win. <laughs> they don't pay when I like accept best offers. The only thing that's more common than that is they say they're going to send me a book and then they're like, nah, I ain't doing that. So, all right. So moving on. We got uh, Penguin Random House Publisher Service um, is providing books for Marvel in October. So a retailer had sent us this, like some of the uh, questionnaires that you would get from uh, Random House. What does everyone think about this? Because it starts October 1st, right? I refer to the only retailer that I really talk to and uh... And, that, and that's Dennis Barger. Shout out to Dennis. Uh, he was on Drunken Chat Friday and went into detail about it. And he's ecstatic about it. Uh, and not 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 in the aspect that, you know, fuck Diamond and, and blah, blah, blah. But uh, I thought it was comical. He, he, he equated to uh, uh, like an alcoholic uh, family member. Like you don't hate him because it's family. You know, like you, you just want them to do better, and and they haven't done it. So, if it takes, you know, going outside of the family, uh, you know, to get better, I don't think it. Also, I don't believe it. It excludes Diamond. Diamond can still distribute Marvel. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Well, but, they they have to buy from Penguin though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Here's kind of my big question, which I, I don't have a quick answer to, or I don't know if anybody knows just yet. Um, does this mean we're going to see uh, Marvel Comics in, you know, uh, grocery stores, uh, bookstores? Um, are, are they going to uh, suddenly appear uh, back everywhere um, so that they have the kind of a reach that? Um, we all enjoy this children. Um, I don't, I don't think so. Well, that's tragic. Uh, I mean, that is. I, think, I, I also horrible. think it's unfortunate, but I, I doubt it. I, I don't think that. Uh, I think the disappearance of newsstands, uh, and I'm, I'm not saying you're saying it was a newsstand. It, it could still be. Maybe they don't do newsstands anymore. Look, like Kroger is a, uh, a chain. Um, you know, in my area, I don't know if they're a nationwide chain, but, yeah. uh, you know, they've got a little book section. Uh, Walmart has a book section. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be uh, like, uh, you know, some sort of like uh, they're mostly Archie book books, store. Correct. Now? It doesn't have to be an actual bookstore. Um, but I think you could see, you know, maybe I'd not love it. a huge amount, but. I don't see why, if you were Penguin, why wouldn't you, if you have some customers that it might be a, a decent fit <clears throat> of, you know, why, why aren't there comics in, you know, box lunch or hot topic, that kind of collectible slash pop culture store. I mean, I know they're, they don't know how to handle them and store them and, and all that, but yeah. um, could be an interesting experiment. Yeah. I think anywhere you see books, I mean, yeah. And experiments, the, the a great, a, a great word for it. I mean, th this gives 
you know, any type of retail, um, uh, re retailer that, um, you know, currently sells books, um, a chance to experiment and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if they're, if they're interested in experimenting and if they're interested in experiment, experimenting how those experiments go. Um, yeah. And will um, we see I, barcode variations? I mean, I, I do not believe so. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, because, um, when I've studied free comic book day, you know, I put on my bargain comics.com, I put together that whole list of free comic book day. There are actually free comic book day, not for every title, but for some, there are free comic book day variants for the book market. And those variants use the UPC or ISBN barcodes. And what this question here is saying is that instead of using um, the uh, UPCs uh, or ISBNs that have been, I believe what this is saying, that, that have been used in the past for comics and also for Diamond's internal system. So if I pick up a, um, let's say, say a, uh, a, a throw on five, right? Um, it's, um, th this in the diamond system is not listed as, I'm sorry, it's, it's too, too close, but you know, it's not listed as seven, five, nine, zero, six, zero, six, zero in diamond system. This is June, uh, it, you know, J U N 18, right. uh, five, five, seven, nine. So diamonds developed their own numbering and, and identification system. Uh, whereas I think with com with going forward, they'll just be using this barcode. Um, and uh, the, the similar one for um, ISBNs for graphic novels. So I, I don't think that they'll be... I don't think there'll be a, like a different newsstand barcode. I agree with Steve on that based on what I heard. Uh, well, actually today, cause I, I couldn't stay. I fell asleep listening to drunk and chat last night. I, I had it on in the back, but um, penguin doesn't print the books. All the books are printed in Canada. And I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. It, it's been like that since like what the eighties or something like that. That, that's news to me. That's crazy. Yeah, but, definitely DC and Marvel. I think some of the indies are yeah, might be we, published. Can we talk about that other issue? Because that's the other big issue, I think, in my mind, is what happens to smaller publishers? Um, I mean, I, I think there's uh, a lot of fear that, it, you know, um, if Diamond is not... Um, in control of direct market distribution, how do small publishers get their books to comic shops? I mean, is this just kind of stuff that's being whispered? Uh, you know, uh, well, I think well, I think it'll be an amalgamation. So they'll be getting their DC stuff from from Lunar, at least for the time being, right? They'll get their Marvel stuff from Penguin Random House, and they'll get a, their indie stuff from from Diamond. Um, Theoretically, right? It, it, in a simple world, um, is there a scenario where this kills Diamond? I I think so. I would. What I would expect is something similar to what happened around this time last year, where when Diamond announced or when DC announced they were leaving Diamond, Steve Jeppy went on the YouTube circuit and s sort of talked about the way going forward, but. In that case, he was not only talking about the way forward for Diamond, he was also talking about the um, LCS, the the industry. Um, and now that I just said that out loud, I think once again, actually, 
you know, it this isn't right. I mean, this isn't just about Diamond. This is about LCS's. Um, yeah. If they don't have Diamond, then you know, then they just have Marvel and DC, unless the Indies start to split up. So, it, yeah, I I would expect in the coming uh, week or two, I, I don't think they're going to leave it out there for long for people to speculate. Um, Uncertainty is not good. Right, for- exactly. Well, you already have like small indie publishers like Scout Comics. They've already, they've already made a deal with what UCS, or is it Lunar? I can't remember which one. I think it's Lunar. Yeah, so I mean, like you already have small publishers that are like self-producing anyways choosing a distributor so i mean i hate to say it, it's probably going to get complicated for the <laughs> retailer yeah. to like have to order through four different distribution companies but it's i guess you know they can pick and choose what they need to for their customer base yeah and uh, again uh immediately the fears have to be for uh small mom and pop shops that they're uh, freight costs are going to go up. And, you know, I just think it's important that we kind of um, have these conversations because for all of, uh, again, the uh, like, Nico hates comic shops. Uh, shit, I get it. <laughs> How many shops are you banned from now? <laughs> Is there a tally? I think, I, think, I think only one, but it's hard to tell. Uh, the point is... Um, you know, I, I worry about uh, local comic shops in my area. In uh, you know, I, I don't live in the major metropolitan area. These are, are guys that really operate on a shoestring budget. Uh, in a lot of cases, thin margins on new books. They're not really good at back issues. Not good at having like seventy-five copies of Moon Girl one second print, like Dennis. You know, they just don't have that kind of skill. They, uh, for all intents and purposes, are really sort of like a franchisor of uh, new comic books, making some criminally small uh, margin there, selling Magic the Gathering packs and pops and all that happy or shit. And uh, I I just hope that um, this doesn't make it more difficult for uh, those stores to stay open and in a a market that's otherwise thriving. Well, I I listened to the the drunken chat just like, uh, Crook and and Dennis talks a lot. He, he he was talking for quite a while, you know. And and yeah, the way he described it, it is good for for shops in general, if only for that. Uh, and, and Steve, you would know more about this, but returns and tracking things and how things are invoiced. Um, you, as far as how things are shipped, I don't know if Penguin's going to be able to take care of books. You know, comics. They're they're used to hardcover softcover books but you know we obviously we're, we're a little more picky that being said you can't get any worse than diamond is now anyways um but i gotta think their return policy or their the way they deal with with their stores when there are issues i mean they've got to have that part down to a science by now right i mean they're they're, they're huge i mean penguin random house um you know the book industry has been consolidating for years um, I've actually had a Penguin Random House account for two years. I've only ordered them f- from them once uh, when I first opened the the account. Um, I plan to do more um, trade paperbacks and um, graphic novels, which I, I do a lot of, but I just didn't wind up doing a lot through them. Um, so in one respect, th- this helps the small LCSs um, because from what I read, uh, everyone's going to be put on a level, level playing field, meaning they get the same discount. Whereas currently yeah. it's based on how much you order. So the bigger of a retailer you are, the larger your Marvel discount is assuming that you order a lot of Marvel product. Right. Mm. Um, and you know, one thing they haven't mentioned yet. Um, and, and you know, that I've, I've never had come into play, at least on the book side with Penguin Random Houses, is, is there a monthly minimum? I mean, I know there is with Lunar. I think it's like $500 a month. 
uh, you've of di uh, DC product you have to order in order to have an Ooh. account with Twitter. Um, I don't know that Penguin Random House will have the same, but I know Diamond certainly has a uh, monthly uh, minimum. And, uh, and as I understand it, I don't know how uh, how well they enforce it. I know I certainly don't risk um, getting my Diamond account pulled. I, 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 I definitely, you know, order at least the minimum uh, every month. But you know that that could begin to create a strain, I imagine, on smaller LCSs if they don't have Marvel contributing to their monthly minimums that they have to order from Diamond. Assuming that Diamond uh, is a, a a going concern, um, well, they'll still the ship. Will, like yeah. the, the really small. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but the the really small shops that might not. Uh, move over to penguin and stick with diamond they can still get their marvel shipment from them oh yeah yeah that's a good point so I yeah you know, perhaps, perhaps they'll relax that minimum for them because it, it puts diamond in a in a position where they have to at least do that right i mean they're yeah they'd want to they, try they still to capture fought. some of that market sure at good least they're point, you know yeah all right uh, yeah, so, and I just wanted to mention this real quick as our last topic. Uh, did anyone catch the premiere of Invincible? I yeah, was going to watch it with my children and realize that I should yeah. not do that. Yeah. I pressed pause right before a head exploded. With my yeah, definitely I'll do that. So if you get through the first three minutes, uh, which because the art is, you know, looks like it was drawn in 1985. Um, all the, <laughs> the plots a little like, or what, what are they trying to do here with a cartoon? And, uh, you stick through those first three minutes. It's exceptional. I freaking loved it. Uh, now I'm kind of a homer for the series. So, uh, take that for what it's worth. But, um, I think it's a, a big win. I don't know that it's going to, uh, push the price of invincible books, but it's going to push the volume of Invincible books that are sold. I think uh, we're going to pick up a lot of Invincible fans. Um, I'll be real interested to see how this shakes out, but uh, I'll watch every single episode. Yeah, and I I'm glad that they put out the first three episodes. And then uh, just as a heads up to everyone, you can pick up free swag at LCSs. This is like a sewing kit. And then I got like a three button set. And they were just free, so wow, yeah. So be on nice. the lookout, yeah. So be on the lookout next time you drop out, drop by LCS. So go get them. Is it is it an inside joke? We're, no, so it's like the character uh, Art Rosen Rosenbaum, like it's a sewing kit for him. And then it's very cool. There's a phone number on there, so give it a call. I'm not gonna reveal what it does, but oh, cool. you know. You just leave a voicemail, and you might get some uh, some goodies or something. Nice. Dude, you guys nice. know how much I dig. I never find Invincible looks. I mean, nothing above, like, issue 75 or something like that. Like, mm -hmm. never. Same. Never come across them. I've known about them for years, but I've, I never see them, dude. They're not out there. The print run, I would again, will say, has to be extremely low, or anybody that, that ever bought them doesn't sell them. Like, to, like, half rice books or their local comic shop. Like none of my comic shops have ever had an invisible one on their wall or have I ever passed one and a half price books or even the outlying shops around where I live. Do I ever see an invincible comic book? All right. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. A uh, special shout out to blue green artifacts for joining us. Like, <laughs> Love having you, and like we'll hope to see you on the Prospect Ten. And welcome the next to the round. land of misfit toys. <laughs> <laughs> Great right. hosting tonight, Aaron. Thank you for. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, so leave any comments or concerns that you have with us, and then we'll try to answer your questions. Send all your hate mail to Aaron, not me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, here's my Instagram. So. <laughs> <laughs>